Yo, 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 man. Welcome back to another episode of For the Love of the Game. Coming to you live the morning of game one of the NBA Finals. But before we get into that, let me say I have a group on Twitter, right? Enter only if you love sports. So if you're a subscriber or if you're watching this video right now, join the community on Twitter. It's just a space where we talk all things sports, basketball, football, a little bit of life. We talk everything. So if you want to be a member, the link will be in the bio join the community and help us grow um okay now the finals you know what i'm saying they start tonight so in this video i will be answering some of the biggest questions concerning the finals jalen brown and jason tatum or the splash bros which defense will prevail finals mvp and what the series will be all of that next All right, man, before we get into the finals talk, we got to start it off with the argument of the day. And the argument of the day today is the shot, right? You know what shot I'm talking about? Jimmy Butler. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, let me, let me you know, run down the time frame of what happened. So this is Miami versus Boston game seven. Boston's been up the whole game, right? 48 minute game. They've been up for 46 minutes. Miami makes a late two-minute run. They get back in the game. Like, 11-0 run. They get back in the game. Everything is going Miami's way, right? They're, they're knocking down contested threes. They're getting stops. They're, they're doing this. They're doing that. Marcus Smart goes down. He misses. There's about 20 seconds left in the game. There's about 20 seconds left in the game, okay? So, Marcus Smart misses the layup. Jimmy Butler grabs the rebound. He pushes it down the court. 20-point uh 20 seconds my bad two point game is 98 to 96 jimmy runs up the court and he pulls a transition three jimmy butler okay so now now you hear that he pulls a transition three now let's really get into the meat of things so if you watch the video max Struess is on his right wing okay tatum is is locked in with max Struess. all right the reason why you could say it's not a bad shot is because Al Horford's heels were at the elbow, okay? So if you're pushing the ball down the court, you got a guy playing all the way off to where his heels are at the elbow, that's enough space to rise up and shoot a jump shot and and possibly make it live with the results. I get it. Kyle Lowry was trailing the play, and he had Grant Williams on him. So you got Jimmy Butler in the right slot. Full head of steam coming down, 20 seconds left, two-point game, trip to the NBA Finals. Al Horford backpedaling. Max Struess occupies right corner. He keeps Tatum honest because if you look, the Celtics don't want to give up a three. That's what the Celtics don't want to do. It's a two-point game. What they want to do is let you get a two, and then they end the game potentially with the ball. Make or miss. You know, if they make it, they win it. They miss, they go into overtime. But they end the game with the ball in their hands. That's what Boston wanted ideally. So, Jason Tatum's going to be locked in on Struess. Grant's probably going to stay to Kyle Lowry. Jalen Brown was in the left corner. It might have been on, on Gabe Vincent. I'm not sure. Moral is, Jimmy Butler one-on-one, -on -one, full head of steam, a backpedaling Al Horford, who's a great defender, a great rim protector, a great perimeter defender. But how good is he? On a guy like Jimmy Butler who thrives off going downhill, right? A guy who thrives off contact. The guy could have very easily got an and one. And Al Horford, who's up there in age, right, can still hang with the guards and switch and, and get valuable minutes. We've seen it all postseason. I'm not saying anything bad about Al Horford. But what I'm saying is Jimmy, full head of steam, Al Horford backpedaling. He probably doesn't want to foul anyway, right, to have the chance of giving up a three-point play. On a guy like Jimmy Butler, who shoots so many free throws, who draws so many fouls. So, when you factor all of that in, right, it just would have been a better shot for Jimmy Butler to go to the rack and not pull up for a transition three. I don't care that he had 47 and four threes in game six. I don't care that he had 35 and a three made in game seven. And in those last two games, he played every minute but the last two. But to me... I get it. You know, you go for the win. You be the hero or you're the villain, whichever one you choose. You go for the win. But you got to think about this. 
hearing that just structurally, if I didn't watch the game and I heard, yeah, uh, Jimmy pulled up for a transition three, they were down two, he tried to win it, and uh, he missed and they lost. I would be like, wait, Jimmy Jimmy Butler pulled up for a transition three? They were down two? I would ask, like, did he did he get double team? Was there was there no time left on the clock? And then when they would say, no, there was 20 seconds left when he got the board, he shot it with probably like 17 seconds left. I would, I would say he shot a transition three, down two, trip to the NBA Finals. Jimmy Butler, who already doesn't shoot threes, right? Let me tell you this. Let me shot. In the last two games, he shot five for 12 from the three. We said that was amazing. We said that was him hitting his shots. In game six, he made four threes alone. So, for the series, he was six for 19. Game six, he made four threes alone. Half of his three-pointers came in one game. He was 6 for 19 for the series. That's not the shot you want Jimmy Butler taking in transition. What you want Jimmy to do is go downhill. If you're going to settle for a jump shot, settle for a midi, right? But get to the basket, get to the cup, put pressure on Al Horford. A lot of people saying they were laying it back to uh, the Kawhi Leonard shot because Jimmy Butler did go make a layup with the Sixers that tied the game. And then Kawhi Leonard came back the following possession and ended the game with the shot. So... I get it. They've been down all game. Like I said, Al Horford was at the elbow daring him to shoot. If you work on your game enough, I mean, I guess you believe in it. Just me personally, you know, I think Jimmy Butler's not a shooter. That's not his strong suit. He doesn't shoot a ton of threes throughout the season anyway. So don't shoot a three for a trip to go to the NBA Finals. That's just the way I feel. But all right, man, look, enough of the argument of the day. Still shout out Jimmy. Like I said, he played all but two minutes. Uh, he had 47, he had 35, put the team on his back. He didn't really have much offensive help. So he was going to be the one shooting the ball anyway. So you live with your best player making or taking a shot. And like I said, you live with the results, man. Look, on to the finals. The finals preview. Uh, the Boston Celtics versus the Golden State Warriors. Boston's number two seed. They'll have home court advantage. They also are, There was there was a stat that came out. They're, they have like an 86% chance of winning the NBA Finals. 86, right? So that leaves the Warriors at 14. Um, how do I feel about that? One, I thought more people would be going for Golden State, right? I thought it would be a general consensus of Golden State is going to win. And even if not, you know what I mean? Like, I'm cool if people don't think the Warriors are going to win. My thing is... Celtics are favored by that much. Now, I know it's just one of those stats with the whatever, whatever. It's not, it, you know, it doesn't really hold that much weight. But 84% is is quite disrespectful, I think, right? You know, especially to the Warriors, who tons of people said the dynasty was over, which are crazy. Dynasty can't be over if the dynasty's hurt. That's all it was, you know what I mean? So, anyway, though, the Celtics are, are favored by a large part. I'm going to give my my suggestions right now. Uh, Warriors in seven, right? And, and it'll go seven because the Boston Celtics are the perfect team to, to combat what the Warriors do so good, right? Off-ball movement, um, trying to hide Steph on defense. Just all these tons of things that the Warriors do. Team ball, moving the ball, find the best player, find the best option. But the the... The Celtics, right, can switch one through five. So all the off-ball screens that Steph and Clay run off of, tons of teams, tons of teams always chase them, right? You got to chase around the perimeter all those screens. Boston can switch one through five, especially depending on their lineup at the time. So that's gonna be more about passing guys off through the perimeter, right? So I don't have to run and exhort all this energy chasing Steph through four screens and deal with a pump fake and you know try to contest and do all this and that. If I'm Jalen Brown, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass him to Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart will take him. He'll pass him to Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum will pass him to Derek White. Right? Derek White will pass him to Grant Williams. Grant Williams will pass him to Peyton Pritchard. All those guys are guys who are going to be in and see minutes on Steph. Right? So you look at that. You look at the same thing versus Clay. Everything they're doing right, can easily be reversed by Boston by switching. Right, Boston has the has the advantage. They're they're more aggressive, and they have more length. 
those are always Steph Curry's kryptonites, right? Anytime guys have success guarding Steph Curry, they're they're super aggressive, super physical on them, and they usually have length, right? To not have to fall for so many of the hezzies and the pullbacks and the crossovers because your your arms are long enough to be able to contest even if you're far away, right? You get a guy who doesn't have the most length, he has to stay up on Steph, which is why the hezzies and the crossovers and, and the pullbacks, everything I'm saying work. So you got to be so reactive to everything he does. When you got length, you could kind of relax, wait till you see him really about to shoot that ball before before you go out and contest him. So Warriors and seven, but I say that to say that Boston has the recipe to beat the Warriors. And I wouldn't be surprised if they beat the Warriors. I was just saying about the graphic that 86% or whatever it was, that's a lot. Um, but they, they have the pieces to beat them. Is it is it going to be the Golden State dynasty continues? Or are we seeing, you know, Boston, you know, make a way and see how long they can run? They're young. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, they just had talks about being split up. Now they're in the finals. They're not going to be split up for some time. You know, so tons of questions. But let's start with which duo will come through more. You know what I'm saying? Will it be the Splash Bros or will it be Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown? So kind of a two-part answer um it's gonna be the splash brothers right i think you throw in the experience right they've been in the final six out of the last eight years the grit they play some real tough teams right they seen lebron and lebron hasn't always had the most talented team but they seen lebron in that game seven year and i think that was enough for them to relinquish that lead to see what it's really like to to play somebody kind of on their level um, but they play Kawhi with the Spurs. Like they play tons of guys, tons of superstars, and tons of great teams to know like it's not gonna be easy. And then I think a, a underrated factor is the hunger, right? Like I just said, there are people saying that the dynasty was over, you know. So Draymond's been, you know, real active and adamant about letting people know that the dynasty's not over. So I think you throw all that in that that it was over. Now they're back. You got Steph playing at a at a high level. Clay came back. He's playing at a high level. And then whenever he gives you normal clay, that's a plus. Uh Gary Payton looking to get back in the mix. Jordan Poole's first finals, right? I think the bench. Jordan Poole is going to be very important, right? Because Jordan Poole has more or less become a real, you know, rotational part of this team. Which means you're banking on what you're getting from Jordan Poole. So if Jordan Poole comes out, the stage is too big and he's just not playing how he did the previous three rounds, that can hurt the Warriors. You know what I mean? Same thing, flip the Boston. You got to look at guys like Grant Williams, right? Guys like Derek White, X-Factor guys who have played absolutely amazing these first three rounds. But if they were to get to the finals and not have that same production on a stage where the highest level of production is needed, all of that can start to play a, you know, it, it can start to play a factor. So. I think the Warriors got experience on their side. I think they're hungry. Um, you know, and, and I think that they're not going to be flustered by a young Boston team who, outside of Al Horford, which he has playoff experience, this is his first finals. They don't really have uh, uh, Daniel Tice, maybe, you know, but they don't have guys who have been to the stage. They've been to the Eastern Conference, and then they never won it because they never went to the finals. But been to the Eastern Conference finals. Uh, Al Horford has been on 60 win teams multiple times, but nobody on that team has went to the finals. I think it was like 128 games played for the Warriors combined roster in the finals and then zero for the Celtics. That's a, you know, that's a big part. And the fact that I'm even giving them seven with no experience in the finals just speaks on talent. You know what I mean? That's, that's what that comes down to. Um, Another interesting point is it'll be the number one defense in the number two defense in the playoffs, in the playoffs specifically, going up against each other. So that's that's where I think this becomes chess, right? That's where two questions. Will Robert Williams be able to stay on the floor, right? Because we know Robert Williams is an athletic, versatile, big, protects the rim. He does this and that for that team. He's the floater, right? But... If they bust out a lineup of Steph, Clay, Andrew Wiggins, Jordan Poole, and Draymond, you know, can Robert Williams stay on the floor? 
and, and I don't mean I mean candy in, in all aspects actually physically right keeping up with the guards switching with the guards possession after possession after possession and then his knee's been dealing with you know one one plus about the finals is that it gives you extra time to rest but Robert Williams in that Miami series was very on and off in the games he could play because his knee was messed up he has a hurt meniscus so availability is the best ability will he be there to play and then when he's there can he actually you know what i mean make an impact and and control um you know what what he does on the floor and how the mismatch are shaped in his favor or not shaped in his favor because at this point both teams know what you're gonna do it's about getting your best matchup executing that matchup or executing you know that specific play and then doing that over and over and over and over and over and over again. Shout out Marshawn Lynch. But that's what the finals are about. So when you look at that, then you look at the Warriors. I had said that the Boston Celtics are the number one. All right, let's, let me just put that out there. Celtics are the number one rated defense. Warriors are the number two rated defense. But my thing was the Boston Celtics are more likely to have the Warriors have a bad shooting game before the Warriors make the Celtics have a bad shooting game, if that makes sense, right? Having Gary Payton back is going to be huge. But there's going to be times where you got Steph and Jordan Poole on the floor. And Marcus Smart's a smart enough guy. He's a vet guy. He plays with a chip on his shoulder. He knows if one of them are on me, we need to attack. Jalen Brown will have the same mindset. Tatum's obviously going to have that. But Jalen Brown will have the same mindset, right? About, like, if these guys are on us, we need to attack, attack, attack. So, I think Boston is more suited, right? I've already mentioned it with the length, the physicality, and the number of guys they can throw at Steph and Clay. that they'll make the Warriors have a bad shooting night before the Warriors will make them have a bad shooting night. But how many times can you have the Warriors have a bad shooting night? You know, that is that is solely based on defense. Because sometimes the Warriors can have a bad shooting night and they can leave the arena like, that was on us. You know what I mean? We had hella open looks. We just didn't hit them. We didn't, we didn't convert. We didn't make them. They're... How many games for Boston to win this series? Let me flip it to Boston. How many games can Boston leave the arena like, A, hey, tonight they couldn't go nowhere. You know what I mean? Good help, Jalen. Good help, Jason. Uh, Marcus Smart, good perimeter. You know, how many nights can they leave the arena feeling like, oh, yeah, we, we had their card tonight, you know? So that's a big determining factor because there are two great defensive teams. We all know the quote, defense wins championships. Which defense can prevail most in and more consistently you know that's a question that's that's left to be answered i'm not really sure but i've already said i feel like boston has the tools to you know have have golden state have some rough shooting nights uh more important Jalen brown or jason tatum right who's who is more important to this series and obviously i can't really say obvi obviously because they they go together so well if Jalen brown is the finals MVP. Finals MVP, what I mean. is meaning uh, Jason Tatum didn't play his best. Jalen Brown was the guy carrying the load. The Celtics couldn't, can't win, right? So I guess when you ask the question, who's more important to the Celtics, Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum? It's Jalen Brown. Because Jason Tatum's Batman, Jalen Brown's Robin. No problem being Robin. Robin was a cool dude. You know, a lot of people bought Robin toys as kids, right? Robin wasn't no slouch. Robin was cool, so just be Robin. But... You know what you're going to get from Jason Tatum. So, therefore, Jalen Brown, which in the Eastern Conference Finals, he averaged 24 points, 6 rebounds, 3 assists. Right? Those are amazing numbers. I think he shot like 47% from the field. So, Tatum's your guy. He's your number one option. You've seen the, uh, the game 6, I think it was, or game 5 when they lost to Miami. Tatum had 10 points. Jalen Brown went for 40. Al Horford went for 20. Marcus Smart went for 20. They're missing their guy, right? Because you always factor in Tatum's 20-ish points. You throw those 20 points in, they could have beat Miami a long time ago. Now, if Jason Tatum was to come out and just not have his most impressive series, what could that mean for Jalen Brown? What could that mean for the Boston Celtics? This, this, that, and the third. But Jalen Brown's very capable of winning you a game. He's not that capable of winning you a series, especially not against the Golden State Warriors. And you, and you flip it back to Golden State Warriors, them being a championship team, they're locked in and they're 
um, goal is to make it hard on Tatum, right? Make it very difficult on Tatum, beat him up, and kind of force Jalen Brown to be Batman. Jalen Brown's amazing. I'm not saying he can't be Batman, but you don't want Batman to be Batman, right? You want to try to limit Batman, limit their number one guy, their go-to guy, and have Jalen Brown, in this case, which is the number two guy, step up and play a role he doesn't normally play. So although his numbers are great, there's another thing to, to factor in with Jalen Brown. He leads the the playoffs in turnovers with four a game, right? Ugly, ugly games in Miami turning the ball over on ball pressure. So when you look at Golden State, you throw Klay Thompson on him, right? You throw Andrew Wiggins on him. You throw Gary Payton on him. You throw uh, uh, Kaminga on him. You know, guys, Moses Moody, guys who are going to come in and see the floor on Jalen Brown, you throw those guys on him. You got to keep that in the back of your head that hey, he ain't been uh, taking care of the ball that well. So, one, can you get the right Jalen Brown, right? The the Jalen Brown you got in the Eastern Conference Finals who gave you a 40-point game in the Eastern Conference Finals. And then can you get the Jalen Brown who limits his turnovers? He handles the ball a lot, right? So, let me not over-exaggerate the four turnovers. He, he handles the ball so much that turnovers are part of the game when you have the ball 60, I can't say 60, 40% of the time, you know, Jason Tatum getting the other half. So turnovers are going to happen, but in the finals, you want to you want to limit those. Um Yeah. And then the last two questions I think that are key points in these finals. I've already kind of touched on one earlier. Robert Williams athletic enough, defensively sound enough. Uh, poised enough to stay on the floor when the Warriors run small ball because he'll be on Dre because what they do with Robert Williams is they put him on the guy who is the the least threat on offense so that way he can float so hey we're gonna put you on this dude he don't really shoot so whenever all these dudes go to the basket we need you to come over come get the block okay we're gonna put you on this guy he doesn't shoot whenever they catch us in a bad position they got a guy open we need you to rotate come get the block that's how they use Robert Williams as a floater right he's the safety uh, uh, if, you, if you watch football, think about that. He's the safety. He hovers over the top, and it's like nothing gets past you. That's how they treat Robert Williams. So they're going to put him on Draymond. They're going to dare Draymond to shoot. Uh, that, that'll that be a key factor also, Draymond shooting the ball. He shoots it more comfortably in the playoffs. In come playoff basketball, I think the Warriors live with Draymond shooting threes. Do the Celtics live with Draymond shooting threes? More specifically, playoff threes. Hey, it's a difference. If I was to look up the numbers and see what he shoots in the postseason versus the regular season, I know the postseason is higher because he's shooting a less number and and he's making them more too. So so they go together. But can Robert Williams stay on the floor? And then you flip to the Warriors with small ball. Can the Warriors run small ball when the Celtics sometimes run a too big lineup, right, with Robert Williams and Al Horford? And both of those guys don't really like lack athleticism, lateral quickness, right? Both of those guys, I mean, Al Horford a little worse than Rob Williams, but they're not slouches is what I mean. So if you wanted to to put that lineup in while the Warriors run small ball and kind of live with putting those two guys on people who are less into it, like having one of them on Andrew Wiggins, right? One of them on, on Gary Payton, who's in the game at times, is not a bad idea. Considering one of them will also be on Draymond. You know, so you you put, matter of fact, you put Al Horford on Draymond, put Robert Williams on Andrew Wiggins, possibly. I'm just saying if the words are going small. And then on the offensive end, you try to abuse them on the offensive glass, right? You try to abuse them on the offensive glass and tell them you can't run small ball if we're going to run two dominant bigs who play like bigs on the offensive glass, Putbacks, block shots, defensive rebounds, you know, just paint presence overall, good screeners, all of that. It's very hard to run small ball if the other team has two bigs in the game and if the bigs are playing like bigs. So, hey, hey, it, it's a lot to it's a lot to, you know, what I'm saying, you know, dive into right before this game. Uh, Y'all see this a little bit before the game. The game is tonight in Boston. And uh, the last thing I'm going to do before we get up out of here, man, is finals MVP prediction. Uh, same thing. Warriors win Steph Curry, right? Celtics win Jason Tatum. Same people who won the Easter Conference finals MVP. Which, what do y'all think about those? I kind of feel like they are uh, 
In this case, it's not going to work, but I feel like it's to let other guys get some shine. Let's say the main guy doesn't have um, a great Eastern or Western Conference playoffs, right? The other guy who stepped in for him can get credited for that and get the Eastern Conference Finals MVP award, the the Larry Bird you know Finals award, the Magic Johnson Finals award. They can get that. I think that way, instead of them like carrying a team, and while the star didn't play good, then the star comes back in the finals, he balls out, he walks away with Finals MVP. You know, the second guy's kind of like, I, I was right there. So, I don't really know how I feel about him, but I feel like the trophies just help kind of eliminate that factor. I guess they're trying to make it fair. But think about this. Uh, Andre Godala has a finals MVP. Steph Curry does not. If they had this award, you know, around back then, Steph could have at least got the the Western Conference finals MVP. And then Iguodala could have got the finals MVP. And it would be like, cool. Steph has none right now. Eagle Dollar has one. It's kind of like, that's weird. So, that's what I think about it. But, finals predictions will be the same, guys. Right? Steph Curry will win it if the Warriors win it. Jason Tatum will win it if the Celtics win it. And then, yeah, hey, I said it. I'm, I'm going to lock my pick in right now on camera. Warriors in seven. Uh, If it goes, you know, if it, if it's shorter than seven, Warriors win. There's no outcome where Boston wins in five or six. I don't see that. But again, man, I have a Twitter group. Enter only if you love sports. That's the name of it. So if you're watching this video or if you're a subscriber to the channel, be sure to join the committee. Link will be in the bio. As always, I'll see y'all next Monday. Peace.